Welcome all to Payday 2. So a while ago I did Payday to Heist, which was the original Payday, and now they've come out with uh, Payday 2. Payday 2 is, um, in many ways, quite different than the original Payday. And uh, I've been playing it qu quite a bit. I actually kind of uh, prefer this version of the um, uh, what they did with the mechanics for the uh, second game compared to the original. And I'll show them all off. Uh, we'll just go to offline for now. So one of the things that's done differently is that you have like these like jaws popping up on like this sort of like crime net type of thing. Um, you'll see them in various difficulties such as uh, hard, or that's, that, I think that's um, that's hard, overkill, very hard. If there's no um, skulls, normal. If it's in red, it's a pro job, and those are like uh, um, basically jobs that you have to complete within um, one go of it. You can't fail and then restart it. You have to do it without failing. I think what we'll do first, let's go jump into four stores of normal. This is one of the early heists, and we'll just show you uh, what it's all about. So Vlad's back in town. He doesn't like his um, stone armors working for Russians. Show him what Vlad does with disloyal countrymen. Locate the four stores, steal all their money, see if you can find safes to crack, and if you stealth it, you get a stealth bonus of 10%. Uh, we won't stealth it, but you can do that. Um, if you play in higher uh, risk levels, you get increased experience in cash. So we're going to get a little bit of that. And um, it's just going to be a little small experience modifier. So let's just get this going. You can play with Team AI, which basically um, throws two computer controlled. Um, Artificial intelligence players, they're not too smart, much like the original Payday. One of the things about this game, the um, AI is actually kind of worse, I think, than the original Payday. They don't really act as well as they, use, as they did in the original, but they'll hold their, their ground well enough. <clears throat> Anyhow, we'll just jump into this and I'll show you off the mechanics a little bit. So this first mission is just a straight up running gun type of mission. As you can see, it's loading. It takes a little bit to do that. Um, it could just be my computer. I think it loads in other people's computers faster than better operating, or not operating systems, but better just computer hardware and such. All right, there we go. So, Ben gives you this plan. You can look at all our stuff here, assets and loadout. So you can like look in the assets to see what's happening. So basically here's um, an overview of what's happening. You've got four stores, the Paris store, har har, um, a Chinese store, um, a cafe type of place, and then there's like a 24-7. And as you can tell, all of these are uh, parodies of um, real life uh, computer stores and stuff like that. Risk level one, that just tells you what's uh, going to be happening. There's a SWAT team available resources. They'll have rapid deployment utilizing APCs, Helicopter insertion teams. They'll have SMGs, PDWs, shotguns with breach and AP loads, assault rifles, and all that lovely stuff. You see a couple SWAT there, got a shield. So a little bit of risk, but not a whole lot. If I want to, if I had the um, skills for it, I could buy an expert driver, which basically makes it so I don't have to worry about escaping. And then uh, body bags, which should be good for stealth. But we don't really care about that. Um, I think we'll wear a heavier armor. You can. Where different types of armor, which basically affect your uh, armor, speed, concealment, dodge, lots of stuff like that. Got a couple weapons here. These will be working fine, I think. So we'll use them. And then we'll just get going. So we start the um, heist here. Looks like we're in, we're in the backyard here a little bit. A couple civilians walking in these alleys. To give you um, orientation where we are, there's the Paris store right there. There's the 24 7. I'll probably want to pick that door here because that's the um, escape door, just to little, let you know. As you can see, there's cameras in many of these stores, and a couple of them, the Paris store and the Chinese one, there's a couple of guards. A 
Well, you're in a terrible place. I would have, I, I usually like to come back here and kill that camera and all that. Let's just see. There's a safe in here. I play right there. Could, there's probably a couple cameras in here. I guess we'll start over here. Why not? So, how cameras and guards work in this game? They're they're kind of um, different than how they worked in the original game, where you know if they just saw you, you're, you're caught. Here, you have like this like concealment bonus, and it just takes a little bit before you get caught. So, if I walk in here, I'm not instantly caught. I have to. Oops, you have to put in your mask to start the heist, as you can see. I think we got a call already. Yep, camera detects suspicious activity. They, they usually um, catch you very quick cameras. They'll pick this. So, some certain doors you have to pick or saw open or blow them up with C4. This is one of them. Picking is very slow but silent. Sawing is very loud but quick. C4 is also very quick, but it takes a C4 charge. Sawing and C4 are limited, so you can't use them constantly. And you may want to use them for other things. There's another big safe here. Cash registers can have money. Sometimes in the back you'll find a cash register. There could also be a safe there, but we already found that safe. A couple cops have already arrived around, but it's fine. Much like the original game, you have to repair drills when they start failing. Cops can also be kind of a nuisance in this one too, because they'll stop the drills. Not just by, you know, like, taking out the power or anything like that. They'll actually kick the drill and... Sorry, it. Across the street. This is a regular convenience store here. They're safe. We got a salt in progress, so if you recall from the original payday. Oh, there's a cloaker. Cloaker's dead. Cloakers can be really big of a nuisance in this game. Unlike the original game, they're a lot stronger. I actually consider them stronger than bulldozers, just because of how uh, threatening they can be. The bulldozers can be quite, quite threatening if you don't know how to deal with them too. They actually made the specials a lot more special, so to speak. them. You probably shot the drill here. Do, 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 do. It's fixing drills. That's what this mission is all about. Actually, that's what all Payday is really about. But I suppose it's a lot worse than Payday too. Looks like we got some heavier SWAT over here.
Do 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 do. So those last guys that killed there with the white helmets, instead of the black ones, those were heavy SWAT. And there's another cloaker. Another dead cloaker. He could be dangerous if I actually let him be dangerous, but I'm not giving him a chance. If you give him a, a chance at all, they will s screw you up. No joking. Let's use the pistol. Yes, I do. I do got this. Yep, you can slim me. And there's actually different types of melee in this game, by the way. I'm just using a simple one from the payday to the heist one, because, you know, I like it the best. But there's also, like, punching, using knives. You'll see them use knives as well if they get a chance. There's a in there, but he hasn't noticed me yet. He's actually got his gun for the wall. Okay, it sounds like there's a cloak around. And this drill's apparently down again. There doesn't seem to be any hard-coded uh, timer before drills go down. They'll just go down whenever they feel like it. Which could be immediately. Or it couldn't be immediately. I cross the street now, but it's just salt, so I'll wait. By the way, the, the weapons I'm using, one of them you should recognize this is pistols, it's called the cross kill. Oop, he went down. You're gonna see me do something very special now. If I get the chance. Up you go. Now that's a little bit different, but you'll you'll see why later. As you can see, the AI aren't exactly too smart. They'll they'll go out into the wrong places sometimes. Alright, keep sawing this safe open. Or drilling it, rather. Can't saw saves open, sadly. Ow! Okay, let's get across the street. Get some ammo. Oh shoot! And there's the cloaker use, using its special ability to knock you down and instantly. They can be really uh, frightening just because they can also jump over stuff too now. I'll, I see them jump on um, under the cars and pop up and take you out. I see them jump over the cars to knock you out. They really can do anything they want to. Oh, I'm lagging a little bit. That's no good. <clears throat> Made on that one. I'm surprised we haven't seen any of our specials like tasers or shields come out yet, but whatever, cloakers are fine. Alright, I have to wait for the van. That's the escape vehicle we'll be using. It 
Since there's an assault in progress, I'll wait for at this safe and then we'll jump over to those ones. By the way, I have a flashlight on this gun. Hip firing there. You note that unless you're aiming down the sights, you can't accurately really aim your gun. There's no, um, you know, crosshair when you're hip firing. Oh, heavy swats. Let's try and cross the street, I guess. Another cloaker, another kill. Okay, escapes arrived. I can escape whenever I want to in this mission, but I think what we'll do is we'll stick around for the other safes just to do it. You don't have to actually for this mission. It's actually I don't something I recommend, but I'll do it just because I'm going to. This is actually almost done too, this drill. Eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, one. Fast hands. Yeah, this if isn't too great for picking the money out of. Okay, got all. Now I get across the street. Okay, good. So yeah, there's no um, crescendo escapes for the heist really at this point. There is some crescendo escapes, but you don't see them unless there actually is an escape. And you'll see those later, hopefully. Okay, so as I said before, it's an escape door. We'll just pick this lock and get out this way. Or that'll happen. Come on, come on, kill him. Wolf's down. I might have just lost this one. As you can see, AIs aren't too helpful. Sometimes. <clears throat> so, yeah, we just lost this one. A good example of how stupid DI can be. So, if um, you're in a regular heist like this, you can just um, get your experience and then retry it. As you can see, if you fail it, you don't get as much experience. Unlike the original game, repping up actually requires you complete the heist. You don't get like just from uh, killing various cops or doing various objectives. You actually have to complete the heist to level up. Uh, we'll terminate this contract. And I'm just going to pause the recording just because it seems my computer is acting up for a moment. All right, let's continue on. So there's just a little bit of a small mission. I figure before we do anything, I'll just show you off a little bit about what this game really has to offer outside of the heist. So, one of the defining features about this game is the weapon and um, customization type of thing. So, you can, as you can see, I can wear various types of armor. I have here um, the two-piece suit from the original game, but I can also wear ballistic vests. I can wear a flak jacket, a combined tactical vest, and if I had a skill for it, I can um, also use the improved combined tactical vest. Um, Mali, you have... The, um, you know, weapon butts from the original game. You also have fists, uh, brass knuckles if you join the Payday 2 official community, knives if you have a DLC, the gauge weapon pack number two. 
for secondaries, you have submachine guns. So, you know, you have like the P90, Cobus 90, uh, Spec Ops uh, machine gun. You also have your pistols. You have the cross kill pistol for the original game, uh, the Bond Grupo Kuros pistol, Deagle. No, everyone should know what the Deagle is. Signature 40, Strike. For any, you know, original game, there's a Strike. Locomotive, there's another original. There's actually a bunch of originals, but I didn't buy them all. Uh, primary weapons, we got um, AK-5s, equal heavy rifle. There's one I'm using, the JP-36. Car 4, and there's the Rhyme Field, that's one of the original shotguns. But the only original, um, only original, like, shot, uh, primary weapon I really liked is that one, but if I go here, buy a new weapon. There's the original amp car for the original game, so it is there. In the light machine guns, you've got Brenner, if you have the gauge weapon pack. Uh, shotgun to Rhinefield, you already saw that one. And I think down here, we have the M308. So there is that, you know, lovely weapon too. And then there's just the regular AK from, you know, the region one too. So lots and lots of weapons that you can, like, you know, choose from. You should have no, uh, you know, you should find a weapon that you'll like somewhere in this mix, because unlike in the original game, there's a lot of weapons you can choose from. And now you can customize those individual weapons as well. Um, take my weapon I'm using right now, the JP-36, so let's modify the weapon. You have various mods that you can use to silence it or increase its damage. You have um, stuff that will increase its concealment or its accuracy and stability. You have gadgets. I have put a salt light on this one. Sights that lets you uh, aim down the sights so you can use various sights. Uh, you can have like stocks and like basically various things on various weapons. Um, just to go to like the cross kill, this is one of the most um, modifiable pistols. The cross kill will be modified to have a suppressor uh, or aggressor here or more damage. It can be uh, modified to have the puncher which gives it more fret. Fret lets you um, basically force enemies into cover. You have gadgets, tactical pistol aids, and pocket lasers, pretty much the same as the uh, other gadgets for rifles. Grips increases accuracy or stability and Magazines, you increase the magazine capacity, kind of like the original game. Except this time you're not, uh, you know, getting like various like uh, rep bonuses to a skill to boost it up. You're just getting the actual um, uh, augmenting um, add-on thing for the, the modification for the, for the weapon that'll uh, do it. Sight, slide. So there's just a little bit about the modifications you can do. Um, and then there's other stuff as well. So that's just like the uh, inventory. There's also skills, right? Right from the original game. Now you have um, basically four trees again. Mastermind, Enforcer, Technician, Ghost. And as you can see, I'm very, very well versed in the, in the Mastermind tree. And these like um, these skills that you get for um, the various classes actually impact you quite a bit in the game. You saw me use one of them, the uh, Inspire. Uh, uh, as you can see, Ace, there's a 75 chance that you will revive a crew member at distance by shouting at them. So I, I didn't have to go up to like revive him, I just shouted at him and he got up. Um, there's Combat Doctor that lets you place two Doctor bags instead of one. There's like uh, Dominator. Everyone should know about intimidating from the original Payday Heist. Here it is, the skill for it. You and your crew can now intimidate a non special MA into a hostage. There's also a skill called Joker that lets you convert them into. Uh, a unit that you can use on your side if you want, but I don't really care about that. Uh, some of the stuff, Inside Man, that lets you buy the asset. Spotter lets you buy spotters. In a ghost tree, there's body bags from Cleaner. So, there's some of that. Technicians, uh, it, just so you know, there is a lot of like stuff that you know can make various things in this game a lot easier. There's like drilling, like hardware um, expert lets you drill faster. Drill sergeant, which lets you drill more efficiently. And just various stuff that you can do to customize your characters. So let's just go back into another mission here. Oops, that's the wrong one. Yeah, just, just multiplayer again. So that's cool, pro jobs. So pro jobs are, you know, as, as I said, they're one-off type of things. I think I might actually do that, perhaps. Yeah, let's do, let's do uh, the pro job. So this is just a simple one where I'm just guiding some uh, guys cocaine from the cops. A pro job means I'll get more experience and more money, though I have to run the mission all the way through. I can't just, you know, cut and run, so to speak, with this one. You have to beat both uh, days in this heist to win, and you'll see what I'm talking about in a moment, with days. But 
I have to do this right the first time to complete this, or else I don't win. I can't restart this one like the uh, four stores one I could. And of course, loading. Loading screen, loading screen. What would I do without D? <sighs> There we go. So, truckload, pro job. Let's choose a couple different weapons for this one. Um, Signature 40. So, we're going to use the Eagle Heavy Rifle and the Signature 40. A lot of the combined tactical vessels I was using before. Assets, I can actually buy a few in this one. I can buy the armor escape, ammo bag, grenade case, doctor bag. We'll buy them all. This is to show them off. So what these do is they place these various assets inside the heist for you to use. And you'll notice up here it says day one, day two. So this is a multi-day heist. You have to complete both of these days. There's basically two parts to this heist before you win. So let's do get to it. So this one's just a straight up um, shooting uh, type of heist. There's no stealth in this one. It's just completely fire and forget type of thing. As you can see, they placed my heist in, or my uh, assets in the heist vehicle. Gonna use my pistol to deal with these guys. Oh. That kind of hurt. Alright. So, this mission is basically a transport mission. You're trying to uh, protect the coke, so to speak. And we're just going to throw our coke in here for now. Okay, I'm bringing a sniper, so I'll bring out this weapon to deal with them. I just want to get this. Out of the truck. Okay, heal up. I'll let the bots steal with them for a little bit. Oh! No you don't! Not with this weapon! So, this weapon is a little bit different than the one I was using. I actually have this one set up to be more of a um, single fire type of weapon. For like sniping type of a deal. As you can see, it works quite well. Bye bye, sniper. You can change your weapons however you want, basically, in this mission, or, you know, in this game. So you can have precision weapons like this. You can have, like, you know, just full on assault weapons if you want. You can change full on assault weapons into uh, single fire weapons. It's very versatile. Bye. You'll notice that on this one I have like a sort of green razor for hip firing if I want to. And by the way I can reload while I'm running. Just because of skills. Not the... Uh, it's not a feature that all um, characters will have unless they have a specific mastermind skill for it. Do, 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 do. Just moving the coke. Right, 
All right, where am I going to coke? By the way, this is one of, one of the heists that are better with more people. Oh, that's a terrible place for the drop off to be. I'm going to keep moving these up just because it's good for this mission to do that. Ooh, heavy SWAT. They're not heavy SWAT, those are um, heavy FBIs. So, different um, levels of, like, you know, enemies will have different types of armor and such. They start off with, like, basic police officers, they move up to SWAT, and then they go all the way up to uh, armored FBI troopers. As you can probably guess, the armored FBI are the strongest in terms of what they can do. Cops generally are the weakest, but they also have fairly good damage potential. Um, SWATs, they're just basically weak, but they come in, you know, big quantities and can be quite threatening. There's a heavy SWAT. They need backup, don't you know? They need backup. And here we go, we're going to pick these locks open. This is one of those positions where a saw would help immensely. Alright, let's start moving to uh, coke all the way up here then. So here's where we basically have to like do this like sort of dash. And damn it, they're being really stupid. And he took me out. I mean I just lost because it Oh so yeah, by the way, um, I also have another skill that lets me get up if I, you know, kill someone while down with a pistol. That's another mass mind skill. So for the next bit, for the next little bit, we're just going to move all these sacks of uh, coke up to that landing up there. Die, please. Good. I want them retreating. Ah, there's so many here. Okay, so they sort of stopped for a bit. We're just going to try to run across the bridge here. Yeah, we have to run all the way across here of guys shooting at us. Yeah, so here's like a sort of like loot drop type of idea. You're just dropping it down to the guy below. And you also know, note that, um, unlike in like the, uh, I guess the original Payday, the cops will actually, um, they will interfere with like your uh, heist by like moving, you know, your loot around, so to speak. If you see like your bags is slowly running away, it's because the cops picked it up and you're actually taking it away. Looks like we're going to have some guys popping up soon.
as it's not the greatest weapon to use um, close range. The laser helps, but I didn't set up for close range combat. Oh, a taser! Bye bye, taser. They finally sent a taser in. Bye bye. Let's run this all the way across the bridge to New Salt. Wee! I mean, shot at. What? Bulldozer? I heard a bulldozer. Now, I do like to say that cloakers are stronger than bulldozers, but only because they're more frequent, and because bulldozers are a lot very, you know, slow. They don't run at all in this um, version of the game, so to speak. Bulldozers are, basi are basically very strong um, enemies that take a lot of firepower to go down, much like the original game. They don't run, though, and um, they generally are a lot more... Uh, as they make up for it, they're basically a lot more deadly when they actually uh, face you. There's like no um, safe point with them. Hey, shields finally. Throw a grenade at them. Ow. Yep, the shields jump down a little bit, but that's fine. Actually, we'll. Drop our med kit now. Heal up a little bit. To tell you a little bit my, about my character, by the way, it's a mastermind. I've actually be um, oh, there's a bulldozer. Bye bye faceplate. Oh, as you can see, they're a lot more deadly than me. They're also a lot more retreated, these guys, the bulldozers. Guess this guy will go down. There's his faceplate. And there we go, he goes. I mean, the way bullers act, sometimes they just, they act like that, they just get pulverized because they're not smart enough to really deal with you. There are one of the few enemies that, they can be strong if they, you know, come in the right situations, if you're in close confined space and you can't really get out. But, they're really weak if, um, you know, they, like, just retreat like that. Bye-bye. Oh, shoot, another one. Okay, they got one of the shields. He's down. Alright, uh, my escape sort of came early in this case. He's he's a dead man. I'm not gonna worry about him. In this one in this one heist, uh, they'll actually attack your getaway driver. He's dead. Oh, 
You're dead. They're dead. Apparently he's not dead yet, as you can see, um, the, I bought the asset, the armor escape car, so he actually holds up a little bit better. Couple sheets of shields coming again. Die, please. Good. All right, let's just uh, <clears throat> get these two bags of coke on and we'll try and escape. I might actually be able to escape with that guy. Uh, one of the things in this mission, if he, he, he can actually die, and if he does die, what will happen is a, a helicopter will come instead. It looks like though they've stopped attacking him for a little bit, so... I might be able to go right to him instead. There's actually an achievement if you go uh, escape with him too. And as you can see, by the way, running's a little bit of an issue. I have to stop every so often because I don't have, as, you know, unlimited stamina like the original game. Oh, there's more bags. Let's just throw this here. I don't, don't, don't know if you can hear me, but I'm actually panting in the background. Just leaving him alone, which is very nice. And in a way, I don't have to wait for the helicopter to escape. All right, there's eight bags total, and this is the last bag over here. More guys there. Okay, let's get this going. Ow, ow, ow. Oh, ow. Nah, it's not really hurting me at all. That green bar at the bottom right down there, that's my health. The white bar was my armor, so it takes a while before you are really in a threatened position. Ooh, just still firing at me. There's a lot of them down there. And I gotta watch your cloakers and our crap. Get a little bit of ammo. Kill you. One last heal, and then we'll do a sort of boulder dash rush. Good, I want to range rating. Get down here. I need reinforcements.
And now we have to basically get to the car. There is him jumping over the crate. He missed though. And that's the first part of Watch Dogs. So there's a first completion. As you can see, you get your experience. Um, if you have any loot, then you get that. But since this is a two-day heist, you don't get that until the second day. You have the crew stats. You have the personal stats if you want them. Why not? We'll do day two just to do that as well. Ammo bag, grenade case, doctor bag, and we got ourselves a sniper! So we're gonna have a sniper this time around, he's gonna be doing a little bit of sniping. He's gonna be on this little place right there, and we're gonna be in this area over here. So he's gonna snipe people who he sees. I'll use my current weapon a little bit more. Oops. See, I was gonna throw this over. There's actually a skill that lets you throw fighter on the enforcer side, by the way. Um, I haven't really been talking about the classes too much, but each of the different classes basically does different things. The Enforcer is basically like your heavy uh, grunt type of guy. Um, he basically does shotgunning, carries the, the saw, the saw open stuff, carries the heaviest armor. The Technicians, you know, he blows up, so he blows stuff up. He's also a good sniper. Um, he can set traps and he can uh, drill and do, uh, you know, the technical stuff faster. And then there's the Ghost who's good at stealthing. The Mastermind who I'm playing is just the best support, so to speak. He basically has to, you know, uh, you know, inspire ability, he can get himself back up if he wants to. Okay, we're just gonna go over here, hit the floodlights. And don't know if you can hear it in the back room, the sniper has got someone. Let's turn the laser. By the way, this laser goes on and off. This little green laser that you're seeing right here. You can probably see it now a little bit better because it's dark. You can turn it off if you want to, much like the flashlight. You can turn your gadgets on and off, which is really nice. By default, they're set to off, but... Get off my coke. Try to pick up my coke, those stupid cops. I should also note, by the way, when you're aiming down the sights, 
you're a lot more accurate than when you're hip firing like this. That sort of makes sense, I guess, but um, I'll note that. They, I think they did that just because uh, it makes more sense. Get some ammo. Our assault's going to be coming soon. I'm out of stamina. I can't run anymore. Oop. Well, he died from the sniper, obviously. Hey! Oh, my bags is running away. Bastard. Make me have to run all the way over here to get my own bag. Seven kills from the sniper so far. So yeah, he's over in that direction. Somewhere. Okay, let's just move this like that. Just want to move this toward the warehouse a little bit so they have less chance of picking him up on me. Our shield over there. And now we're just going to wait for the boat, the escape boat, the loop boat. You want to go? Stupid shield. It's worth knowing, by the way, the shields um, are a lot more effective in this game. You can't circle straight from them as much as the original game. You can, but it's just not very effective. Let's actually move this. Dock 7. Okay, where's Dock 7? So you got Docks 8. I think that's Dock 9 over there. Dock 7 is right there. Okay, so move over here. Die. Another one taking up a bag on me. They really like to move your bags, and they will do it on you. And on note, by the way, you can throw your bags into the water here, so be very careful unless you're going for an achievement for it. There's an achievement for throwing them in the water. Hey, hey, hey! They're all running away with my loot. Ow. Bastard's moving my coke on me. I'll note that if you have multiple people, this would be less of an issue. This, is a, this really is a game that co-op pays off a lot more than playing single player. Which makes sense, it is a co-op based game. Ow. Heal myself up a little bit. There's a taser somewhere. Where is the taser? There it is. Ow, ow, ow. Bastard, bastard taser, take that.
No more rooms. So the loot boat's gonna go away. Ow. I got flashbanged a little bit there. And there's a bulldozer coming. Oh, there's two of them. Okay, this is where we actually want to move away from those bulldozers. And I'm just going to place this here. Now, one way to deal with bulldozers. Nope, we lost him. I want to like, escape at this point. But again, we'll hold off and try and get the most loot, loot we can. Okay, there's the bulldozer coming again. I gotta deal with these bulldozers, they're being really annoying. Take this. They don't like taking lots of firepower by... Oh, there's a black bolter those are. They come in two varieties, by the way, now. Here's black and green. Green's the regular one. Green's now dead. Black's down. Hopefully I can do this without my CPU buddies, but oh well. Just drop the loot in there. As you can see, by the way, uh, we're getting lots more loot now for the extra bags. How this mission works is you can actually just do the minimum amount. You'll get less money that way. If you uh, stay though, you'll get more money just doing the extra. And luckily losing um, toxin there wasn't too uh, big a deal. All right, we have to get out of here now. There's the helicopter. 18 kills from the sniper, by the way. So there's a completed mission, on pro job at least. There's the contract pay. You get lots of money, as you can see, if um, you do everything. And then, of course, when you complete mission, you get your experience. So here's, you basically get full payout at the end of the heist. There's a good payout. Crew stats, I got fairly good stats. Now, one of the unique things about how this game works is, to get your like um, mods and masks and everything else, you have to do like these card things at the end of the heist. So here, we'll just pick this middle card here. And we got a weapon mod, and it's Shark Teeth. That's a mod for um, the Rhinefield uh, shotgun, or the locomotive, I think. 
So I'll show you modding a little bit now. So inventory, let's go just, let's say I want to have um, the Rhineback have the shark teeth. So that's more damage, less accuracy, more stability, less of concealment. So now it's going to do a little bit more damage. There's some of my other stuff I have on this, by the way. And why not? We'll actually equip the Rhyme Field. I'll use that for the next mission I'll do. Let's put on a suit. And let's equip you. The Rhyme Field's not very stealthy, but whatever. I'm not going to really worry about that. So uh, I'll pause recording again just to break this into bits again. And then next time we're going to do a stealth mission. All right. So at this point, I've shown you. Uh, a lot of like the um, pow pow bang bang type of uh, deal with uh, Payday 2 but there is stealth missions in this game and I think we go there's one right there by the way but we'll do uh, a simpler one we'll go to um... by the way you can click this to go to specific jobs we're gonna go to uh... Vlad here, I'm gonna do nightclub and Mm. Let's jump it up to very hard. So, here's um, Nightclub. How Nightclub works is basically you can stealth this one if you want, and it's actually advisable that you can stealth it. So, uh, let's do that. You can actually buy these contracts, by the way. I haven't been doing it, but you can. Let's buy this one. So just so you know, you can. It's better to uh, wait for um, the heist to pop up. But you can also buy them if you really, really want to do a specific heist. In this case, I want to do specifically this heist for this uh, video. Just because it's a very nice stealthy one. In fact, an easier one to stealth, at least. That's why I think about it. And the loading screen just takes forever! Fun! Alright, nightclub. That's where I got all this set up. So I'm just buying several assets here. So bought a whole lot of um, assets here. I actually recommend you don't have to buy this many. What you really do, I do. I do what I recommend for this mission, by this this heist, buy the loot drum pack for nightclub, and the other stuff is optional. Buy here's risk level two, by the way. Um, FBI heavy response. They'll use APCs. They're gonna have SWATs. They're in like heavier, heavier armor. The FBI SWAT. So, very simple mission, we're just basically robbing these guys. And we're going to do it a little bit stealthy if we can, just to start. So we'll come here. So that little mirror just popped up right there. That mirror that pops up is like a concealment meter. If um, it reaches full, then you've been detected. And right in here, we're going to avoid the mobsters. That's like that guy right there. There's a camera and a door. There's management, there's another camera. Another mobster. So as you can see, there's people running around. There's mobsters that basically act like guards in this mission. There's cameras to worry about. The cameras are everywhere. 
Alright, what I want to do in this mission is probably get over here, put my mask on, so you can start the heist wherever you want to. I'm going to take out my son's pistol here, take out that camera. So, you can drill these security doors open, and I'll note that this is making noise. There's actually skills that make this sound if you want, and then the only way to see this is if you actually see it for your guards. And I could put one here, but this one's directly visible from the doorway. So we're actually going to wait for a guard to pop in, I think. So it'll take 150 seconds to drill through this. So we do have a guard coming, and I gotta fix this drill. Okay, excellent. So, um, what would happen if this guy's a regular guard and not a mobster? He'd actually have a pager if you answer, but mobsters don't have pagers, so to speak, so... Okay, he's down. I can stand put this one here now. This guy didn't have a key card because I don't see one. I should actually kill that camera there. And this camera. I'll note that this is a lot easier stuff because these mobsters aren't trained guards. They'll still detect you if you're, you know, badass and all that, but um, they aren't properly really made to really identify that you're dangerous. And we got a guard coming. He doesn't have a card. So that little um, mark was popping up because he heard the sound of the drill, but he didn't know where exactly it was. He just knew there was a sound of a drill somewhere. And by the way, I killed his camera because he doesn't detect this as suspicious, and because the camera will detect him as suspicious if he's lying dead in front of it. And I gotta fix these drills over and over again. Okay, that guy detected me there, which is a bit of a nuisance, but it's fine. The DJ detected me, and he's not really being noticed by anyone else at the moment because he's behind cover. This is really a mission where you're eventually going to get detected, probably. You can't stealth it completely, but it's not completely easy to do. Looks like we might have another guy coming. Alright, well, camera detected suspicious activity. We'll use a key card to get through this one. And now we're going to go loud, basically. But there's like a good, you know, show of what stealth is like in this game. It's, a, it's skill based, basically you have to plan your moves very carefully. Okay, I want to pick up this. That one's not open, but the one down here is. So we'll go down, ow, here. 
There's a safe right there. Oopsie. Well, I set that all in, in flames before I get the money on the table. Ow. Get this. We get the money from the tellers here. Because I'm opportunistic, you see. I'm not just after the money to save, I'm after all the money. Tasers apparently coming. Oh, cool. We got safe down here. Buy um, cloaker. And get that guy. They're dead. This drill shut off for a moment. Put this under here. So as you can see, that fire is actually preventing stuff from coming down here. Gonna take a while to get through these safes, but oh well. Three minutes in this one. Not a whole lot of cops have come yet, but they will. These drills are doing very well for once. Well, spoke too soon, I guess. It's bound to happen, right? They're they're gonna just stop drilling. Ah, here we go. We got heavy uh, heavier SWAT guys, FBI SWATs. Yeah, we'll hit him in the face. And if you heard Bane. Um, he just said there's a bunch of snipers uh, taking position, so we'll have to deal with them. Take some money from here. Two minutes on this drill. Oh, there's a heavier SWAT. An FBI heavy. He tried to knife me there, that bastard. Come up to meet me? I'll come down then. Or we'll reset this drill. You can actually move around a little bit while fixing stuff like this. Not a whole lot, but.
That's still on fire. I'm amazed that dirt, that drill hasn't stopped down there. But I'm worried about this drill more so than the other one. Finally happened. Ooh. All right, as you can see, it's just very hard to circle strafe. You really need to have your teammates to help you with shields a lot. What's the time on this one? Die, you bastard. Okay, let's go over to this med bag. This is one of the assets I place with um, the assets. So, free med bag. Bag to cash. We got some cash. We'll worry about that later. I'm actually more. Yeah, it is this one. Good. Okay, let's take this money. Die, you bastards. We're just gonna launch this over here. Light this on fire. So loot dump trunk uh, has arrived. That's where we're going to drop our money. So here's where we're moving to loot. Okay, now we gotta really deal with the snipers, so. Kill that sniper. So, as you can see, the money isn't exactly worth a whole lot. For this mission, the money is like what you're after, so to speak. Though, if you come down here, sometimes you'll have Coke. And that's worth money. I can run with coke, so we'll do that. We. As you can see, coke's worth almost 60k. There we go. And now we have to basically sit tight and wait for our escape driver to arrive. I've only got two ways for cops to come at me. From up in the management office or um, down this direction. So I think we'll move a little bit. Uh, let's actually camp out in here, I think. This is a nice defensive position up here. I mean, you've got cover. So to speak. By the way, FBI shield. Still protects stuff. Much like the original one, the FBI shield will still protect, you know, stuff behind it. If, if the guy's dead. So that's going to be a barrier. Until it disappears.
Just waiting for that escape, and then we'll uh, be done this mission. Nah, let's be nosy. There's over. There's some more cash you can get from in this area if you go. By the way, let's go here. One k cash, not a whole lot, but sometimes there will be more. It's a salt, but they're taking their sweet while to get to me, aren't they? All right, we have to get to escape, so let's take these guys. Actually, they're in the right place. Let's go this way. Need my AI to protect me from cloakers. Like this. Well, that cloaker's down. There's usually only one cloaker though, so I should be fine running across like this. Hello, cops. And errors in their completion, so there's nightclub on very hard. A little bit of cash, not as much as Blocks Dogs, but more than enough to uh, count up the experience I'm going to get here. Crew stats. I down once there, but I had fairly good accuracy, high body count, specials count. Uh, let's pick this card. Nice. I'm actually after weapon mods at this point in my character, but I didn't get any on this one, so it doesn't really matter. White and black, infamous item. Uh, I guess I'll tell you a little bit about infamous before we go to. So, infamy. You don't have what it takes yet. To become infamous, you need to get a reputation level 100, pay a fee of 200,000 for your offshore account, and along with all your skill points, the rest of your spending cash. So, um, just kind of like a reset um, thing in this game. If you get like to the maximum, I guess, level of 100, you can reset your character back down to zero to get one infamy level. And then it's basically like, you know, rebirth type of thing. So if I want to, you can unlock the infinite tree. Anyhow, I think this has been a fairly good show of what Payday 2 is all about. Um, if you enjoyed this, I might do you know some more videos about Payday 2, and we'll see where we go from there. So take care for now, and hope you enjoyed.